Okay, let's look at simplifying another a few radical expressions. Uh, we've talked about this. What I, what I want to try to do now is I'm going to try to avoid writing this as a rational exponent. All right, let's get down to the idea of simplifying the radical when it's in radical form. Um, notice that underneath this radical there's a, there's a power, or excuse me, a product that also coincidentally includes a power. So I've got two times a to the seventh. And anytime you have a product under a radical, you can separate that into two separate radicals. So this is the same as the cube root of two times the cube root of a to the seventh. Now we've mentioned this on some previous videos you may want to check out, but a cubed root, we want to go in search of perfect cubes within this power. Now obviously two, not a perfect cube, right? Like I mentioned before, you probably want to have a space somewhere where you list these perfect cubes. Those are the first five perfect cubes, 1, 8, 27, 64, and 125, right? Because each one of those has a perfect cube root. Two doesn't fit that criteria. But anytime you have a power of an exp or of a variable where the, pot where the exponent is higher than the degree of the radical, you're going to be able to move out some of these, right? And the key to this is understanding the, what I call the decomposition of the power. And that is a to the seventh is a times a times a times a seven times, right? Well, I can break that into chunks where using some of our exponent rules from the past, this is really a cubed times a cubed times a to the first. Now why am I choosing cubes? Because the cubed root of something cubed, those are going to undo each other. Just like I know I've shown this before, the square root of 4 is the square root of 2 cubed, or excuse me, 2 squared, and the square root of 2 squared is 2, right? Anytime we take the square root of something squared, we just get that base value as our answer. The same can be done here. If I can find perfect cubes, inside this power, then every time I take the cubed root of that, I'm pulling it out. So the cubed root of a cubed is a. I've got two of those. Now I can't do anything with this remaining a, so I have to keep that cubed root there. And don't forget what we had from the beginning, this cubed root of two. So I have two a's that aren't under that radical anymore. That would be a squared, but under the radical, when I put it back together, I've got the cube root of 2a. So it looks a bit odd when you write it like this, okay, a squared and a cube root of 2a. I don't really have any advice for keeping that straight. Just be careful with your notation when you're writing these out. 